Well, hello there, Super 7 Stylist. Is that what we're even calling this group? I'm just going to say Superstar Sister Stylist. I just got myself into some sort of a tongue twister, but hello there, Sister Stylists, who are all superstars. That's why you are in this group. I'm going to real quickly just make sure I am in the right place. Um, if you are watching live, tell, say hello, tell me where you're joining from. And what I'm going to talk about today are these post prompts and a little bit about this wonderful platform that we're all using right now called Facebook. Hey, Misty, so glad you're here. Um, I know you have a friend in this group. Go ahead and tag away. If you've got a sister stylist you know in this group, guys, go ahead and tag them. If you're just hopping on, let us know where you're watching from. I'm going to be talking today about these post prompts that are a perk of being in this group. You're going to learn more about those and we're going to talk a little bit about Facebook. I hope to bring to light some things that maybe you haven't heard before. So this is going to be um, hopefully interactive. I don't like to sit and talk to myself, so please feel free to chime in. Hi, Erin. Glad you're here. Hello, Kathy from Portland. All right, guys, we're going to hop right in. I'm just going to respect your time here. But what we're going to talk about is using Facebook to build your brand. So how to build your audience to build your brand. Hello, Genevieve. So the way that we win in business ownership, it doesn't matter what type of business you're in, we win with attention, right? Attention is what wins. And so we're going to use this social media platform to help gain attention. Excuse me while I move some things on my desk here. I just realized I didn't even have a place for my mouse. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes right before I hit the live button, um, chaos totally ensues. And just in case you're watching and you are and you really need the vote of confidence that says, I can do it too. I am a homeschool mom. I've got four kids at home with me all of the time. We also have two dogs, um, service dogs, a guinea pig and a leopard gecko, and my husband is active duty military. So I love those Me Too stories um, because I think it helps us to always know what's possible. So if we have anything in common, don't hesitate to shout that out too. Hi, Nicole. Glad you're here. All right, let's dive in, guys. We're going to talk about using Facebook to build your brand. It's all about building your audience, right? So um, meta, Facebook, I'm going to use those things kind of interchangeably today. So if you hear me say meta, you'll know what I'm talking about. But first of all, um, we're all on this platform right now, right? So we know the value of this platform. But so many times when I'm doing this training and, and and talking to other business owners, brick and mortar style business owners, realtors, it doesn't matter. A lot of times people say Facebook's for old people. Anybody have a teen at home? I do. Um, and I hear that from, from all ages, but particularly um, the teens and 20s, Facebook is now the platform for old people. So I guess if we're on the platform, we're old, right? Um, hi, Shelly. Oh, you have four kids also, Genevieve. Awesome. Okay, so, and I know, Erin, you are super mama. <laughs> I love that. 11 kids. Oh my gosh, that's just so awesome. So what we're going to do, guys, um, is is kind of debunk this and really just break this down and how this platform works, how to make it work for us better. And then you're hopefully you'll realize what a value these post prompts are going to be to your business moving forward as a part of this super 700 society. So first of all, um, you know, Facebook is... It could be for old people, maybe that's fine, but it's also the number one social media platform in the world. And Facebook owns four of the top six social media platforms out there. They own Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and what's the last one? Oh, and Messenger. And then not to mention that, but they've also bought Oculus. And Oculus, especially if you have a teen at home, it's all the hype right now. It's also the hype in the fast growing business world um, with the metaverse. So um, they're even selling real estate right now, parcels in the metaverse. So it's really a big deal. It's ever growing, ever changing. And you can't operate an Oculus without Facebook. So this is just one more way to get connected, right? Okay, so it's the number one social media platform in the world. And when you're building your edge rank on social media, you have to start on Facebook. It's actually the only platform that has a ranking scale that affects your visibility on all the other platforms. What? So if you have pre previously been focusing, putting all of your um, focus onto Instagram, 
Instagram and maybe you're just on Facebook to communicate with Color Street and to have your VIP group and to be on things like this, then great. But I want to encourage you, let's dive a little bit deeper into Facebook a little bit because that's going to elevate your visibility on the Instagram platform as well. So first of all, we're going to talk about the, the, um, Ranking signals for 2022. These ranking signals change um, all the time, but these are in order that they're most important right now. It's relationship. So this is the relationship between you and the user, the content type, the popularity of the post and recency. So we're gonna break down these four ranking signals just a little bit, ignore my fingernails. They were polished cute, but do you know how like um, when you're doing life and you're out and about and you put on a sample, sometimes you end up with a mess. That's what I have right now is a mess. So as you see, my fingers pop by the screen. Um, there you have it. Okay, so relationship. This is really important. Relationship is actually how Facebook calculates your relationship between you and the people you're trying to reach or engage with, right? So it's you and the viewing user. That's relationship. Um, ways to um, enhance your relationship is comments, messaging, tags. So if you're wanting to get somebody's attention, instead of texting them, hit them up in Messenger for a little bit because Facebook will start to see the relationship that you have with this user comment on their post this is why we always encourage you to get out there and comment for a few minutes before posting about your business right spend at least five minutes and your custom audience we'll talk about custom audiences in just a minute too but this does build the relationship so it's going to increase your visibility next is content type what type of edge are you are you posting is it a video is it a live feed is it an external link um is it a long post a short post so Content type matters and each different type of content does carry a weight. More on that in just a little bit. Popularity. So did you know thumb scroll is actually a measure of popularity right now? So do people just scroll on by or do they actually stop, scroll up, scroll back down? How long do they spend on your post and how long do you spend creating your post? Those are actually both ranking signals. So this is why um, you've probably been taught by your upline. You may use my content at any point, but please don't copy paste. They're not saying that to keep their own content or for some weird protection over their own content. They're actually Actually saying that to help you so that you spend more time in the box right so don't edit it on note section and go back and forth and then just paste it and then hit go go to the to the box spend some time in the box editing that post before you throw it up there um, so um, popularity has to do with your thumb speed um, I got a little outside of the box there when talking about being in the box but um, popularity is thumb speed it's interactions it's how many people are smashing the angry face on your post or loving the post and it can be popular and be angry, right? So we're going to talk about um, how you can use that angry face moving on down um, as we go through some of this training a little bit deeper, but um, that's what popularity is. So are you stopping the thumb scroll? Are people engaging and interacting on your post? Recency is how new is this post? And there is a 70 second timer. We'll again talk about that in just a few minutes, but how recent is this post and how quickly did people react to it? We're going to talk about all of those things, but first, we're going to go over some terminology for this conversation today. I'm going to go through a lot of stuff, guys. This might be a training that you want to come back to um, time and time again, because what I found when I was learning these things is that... Um, you know, I would pick up on something different each time. So we're going to start by getting into the first, there's just this first segment right now. Um, and we're going to move on rather quickly. I do tend to talk fast, but don't worry, this recording will be posted for you to come back to regularly because we want these post prompts to remain a thing for you that helps you to get in front of your audience, get the attention that you need to build your audience to build your brand. So, and when we talk about your brand, we're talking about you, your personal brand, not the Color Street brand, although that is a brand of behind the product that your brand, you are moving. Okay, so terminology here real quick. Profile. Everything we talk about today, guys, is on your profile. Your profile is um, very... Um um, it could be compared to an online business card, right? Your profile. It's where people can click to add friend or click to follow. That's your profile. The audience is anybody who can see you. So your audience isn't just using your friends list. If you're using, um, you know, some visibility toggles there, um, a group is something that you join and there are different settings for the group. A page is something that you like. You can follow, subscribe, all those things too, but page is something that you like. And then there's the newsfeed. And when you hit the 
home button, that's your newsfeed. It's filled with all of those things. It's filled with your audience. It's filled with groups. It's filled with pages. It's filled with ads. All of those things are a part of your newsfeed. So I wanted to get all of that out really quickly before we move on. So hi, Amanda. Glad you're here. Um, Aaron, notebook and pen. Awesome. I love that. Um, and definitely, guys, again, this is something that's going to remain posted so you can come back, refer to it. Um, just a little note taking thing. I actually, when I'm taking notes, sometimes I love to put the time that we are within this conversation so I can fast forward and easily find where I left off or whatever. Anyways, I will squirrel all the time. I have some notes in front of me so that I don't go too crazy, but I will still try to, <clears throat> excuse me, read your comments and stay on task. <coughs> All right, so we're going to move on to audience selection. You're a business owner, and when you have attention, you are winning. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, one second. Okay, pardon me. So um, we're going to talk about audience selection because as a business owner, when you have attention, you're winning. So we need to get attention. We need to grow your audience. We need as many people as possible to see. Yes, timestamp the notes. Thank you. We need as many people as possible to see what we're posting. So I'm sure you ladies are super savvy and you've probably seen the little drop down when you go to post. There's a world globe because you are. Oh, my finger just like didn't bend. That was awkward. There is a globe, a world globe, and as a business owner, when you're posting, unless it's extremely private, psst, if it's extremely private, don't post it on Facebook. Okay, but unless it's ex extremely private co content, you're gonna use the world globe when you're posting. What is going on? <laughs> and that's going to be able to elevate your visibility. There is also a toggle for friends only. There's a toggle for friends except. <coughs> Excuse me. And there's a toggle for only me. I usually use two of those um, audience selections. I use only me because I love, love, love reminders from Facebook, especially when it comes to milestones for my kids or just funny funny pictures, silly moments, all of that stuff. <clears throat> so sometimes I just want those selfishly for, for me, right? Um, and it's like a backup to our data sometimes. I know iPhone does a great job of reminding us of past events, but I love it for that. And then I also use the public setting and that's pretty much for everything else. So you guys all have access within your Color Street app to the personal branding worksheet. And I'm gonna reference that personal branding worksheet for just a moment. <clears throat> because this is really key to creating the content that we're going to put up there. And with every post prompt that we share with you each week, you can actually refer to your branding um, worksheet to kind of pull all of that material together. So there's two different types of branding um, for all businesses on social media. And businesses usually either choose imposter branding or hero branding. And hero branding is when everything is about yourself, right? But no matter what, our goal is to make this funnel um, or the target as small as possible. Because let's think of a fisherman for a, for a minute. You know, we don't see like big fishermen even just going out and casting giant nets randomly in the water, right? Because they're going to pull up a whole bunch of crap that they weren't looking for. But if they take a specific bait to a specific water at a specific time, they're very likely to catch all that they're looking for. And that's kind of what we're doing. So the more specific you are with your audience, the more likely you are to bring in exactly what you're looking for, to find exactly what you're looking for. So I want you to go into this with an abundance mindset that it doesn't matter how small you make your target, there are plenty of people to still fill your funnel because if you aim at nothing, you are going to hit it every single time. So big key here is not casting a great big wide net because we actually want to hit our target, okay? So <clears throat> if you are working on um, hero branding, which most of us um, in Color Street and direct sales, we are doing hero branding. Why? Because we want more people who are just like us. Isn't that the ideal world? Ah! If we just had more and more people who are just like us, people who are partying, people who are enrolling, people who are passionate about a product, people who are excited, you know, we need more of who we are. Maybe, however, I don't, you likely wouldn't have reached this group by doing the things that you don't want somebody else to do, but maybe you're looking for somebody else different from you. And if so, you would use imposter branding. But I think for our business, for the most part, we're going to be using um, hero branding. So this is, you're going to ask these questions of yourself. What makes me unique? Where do I find me? 
right now? What am I doing right now? What interests do I have? What stops my scroll? These are the questions that you're going to answer about yourself for hero branding that are going to help bring your content come together. And then I'm still talking about the brand worksheet here. So I know I'm broadly covering some things, but I want what I want you all to do is go to that app, print out your brand worksheet and spend some time on it. This isn't something that you're probably gonna sit down and fill out unless you already really know your brand, but maybe you're gonna ask some, um, some of your VIPs or some people who know you really well, what makes me different? What makes me unique? I'll tell you a couple things because you're gonna pick five brand pillars and I'll tell you how these five brand pillars come together. So. Um, brand pillars for me, I'm a craft store junkie. I am a fitness wannabe. I love tacos. I'm a doodle mama and I'm a mom of many. So these are all some of the five brand pillars that I use and I post within this brand worksheet. Again, guys, is going to help you with that. But I want to give you an example of what is a fitness wannabe. Okay. I have a membership to six gyms right now, but as you can see, I have a body sculpted by tacos. <laughs> um, so the six memberships would tell you I want to go at the, go to the gym. My love for tacos is what keeps me here. But also because women can relate to my struggle, right? So I'm going to go to bed. I'm feeling really motivated right before I go to bed. I might lay out my gym clothes. I know exactly where I can fit gym into my day the next morning. I wake up. I put on my pants, my tight pants where things don't shake and I put on my top and I pull up my hair, grab my water bottle and I head to the car because I am motivated and ready to go to the gym. I get in the car. Sometimes I even start the car and then I start calculating which gym am I going to go to? How long is it going to take me to get there? Um, how long is it going to take me to get back? Shoot, it's 20 minutes there. It's 20 minutes back. That's already 40 minutes. I've got to get in a workout in order to make it worth it. I probably need to stay there about 40 minutes. I'm already more than an hour and 20 minutes into this day. And oh my gosh, I'm going to have to blow dry my hair. So what do I do? I get out of the car. I come back inside. I take out the ponytail and I put on real clothes. And that's being a fitness wannabe. But I want to tell you that there's not a whole lot of fitness wannabes out there. There's not a whole lot of people with six gym memberships. That's something, pardon me, I just got a phone call. I'm going to reject it there. That's something that's kind of unique to me, but I will tell you a lot of women understand and can relate to that part of my brand pillars, okay? Um, I might even wear a shirt that says chaos coordinator because that's part of moms of many, right? And I'm able while I'm out and about to pick up people who are similar to my brand, but then also it goes along with what I'm going to be posting in groups, my VIP group and other groups. And you're going to use these brand pillars to find groups for you to be in because this is another way that you're going to build your audience, okay? So I'm going to stop right there when it comes to personal Personal branding because I really want you to find the personal branding worksheet within the app and spend some time on that worksheet really identifying who you are and who you're trying to attract to your business. Who do you want to most work with? Because in our industry, one of the greatest things is our profession. One of the greatest things is we have the ability to choose who we're going to work with. And so we might as well choose, be really choosy about those people. Remember to be yourself when you're doing this because everybody else is taken. Hi, Renee. Hi, Emily glad you're watching. All right, so let's talk about the three E's of social media marketing. We're going to educate, entertain, and engage. Every single post that you're putting out there onto social media is going to do one of those three things. Got to educate, engage, or entertain. So always be thinking of that. As we develop in our social media mar marketing, we're going to evolve and um, we're going to enrich as well. And so those are just, those are the two extra E's. I give you a little extra content, but right now we're not going to talk about that. So anyways, back on track. So a um, couple tips for your personal profile. If you want to get attention, make sure you're paying attention to the cover photo. Remember that people um, are going to, they, they send you a friend request because they want to be connected to you, who you are. They don't want to be connected necessarily to your brand. If you were friends with them before Color Street, stop spamming them with Color Street. Your cover photo shouldn't have anything to do with Color Street. Your profile picture doesn't need to have anything to do with Color Street because that's sort of like borderline spamming our friends, right? So we just want to make sure that we've got a nice, clear photo of our head. Our profile is only us. Why? I'm sharing this because in a world of a lot of Color Street stylists, some people share a profile with their spouse, significant other, children, and I'm just going to tell you, if the profile picture says Nick and Hannah Steelman, I can't expect anybody to message me because they they don't know who they're messaging. They don't know whether they're messaging me or my husband, right? 
So single name on the profile, even if for whatever reason you wanna share that profile, just put your name at the top. Make sure it's your picture. People aren't in a relationship with your dog or your kids. They're trying to build a friendship with you on Facebook, so put your face on that profile picture. Um, even if you're hiding from yourself, it's okay. You gotta get your face out there because everybody else is still wanting to be connected to the amazing you, okay? So profile picture, cover photo. Make sure your cover photo is connected to one of your five brand pillars. So if you know your family is a part of your brand pillars, that's a great freaking place to put your family. Put a great big beautiful picture of your kids up there, put your dogs up there, whatever it is. And Facebook loves it when you change your profile every 30 days. So if you're feeling like palm D dumb, I'm not getting the attention that I want, get out there and give that profile picture an update. All right. So um, that's one of my favorite tips there. The next tip I'm going to share with you is something that a lot of people don't know about. So what I want you to do is take an inventory of your friends on social media. Facebook actually has three different profile accounts. There's a user, influencer, and celebrity. And those uh, size of accounts are determined by the number of friends that you have. By the way, guys, I'm going to take a time out here real quick and say I'm about to deliver something to you that is a really valuable piece of information that is going to explode your social media marketing because I'm going to talk about the algorithm and I'm going to talk about these three different types of accounts and if you're sitting here thinking oh I wish so and so could see this oh I wish so and so could see this and they're team members of yours and they're not in the super 700 society as soon as this live ends I want you to go message them and invite them to the super 700 society is that what we're calling it super seven um <laughs> I get all tongue twisted here just like at the beginning okay so invite them tell them the value of this group Group and help them to work towards their spot right here because that's what we want to do is we want to bring value to you and elevate your business so make sure that they know about this group first of all and help them work towards a seat right here in this group okay so back to the three different types of accounts the Facebook has three different types of accounts we don't get to choose them Facebook chooses them for us it is user influencer and celebrity right so um, that is chosen by your number of friends. So if, when you go and look at Facebook and you have one, one friend, which I know you all have more than one friend, to 1,499 friends, that is a user account. And the reason that this is important, well, let's get to that in a minute. Friends, um, if you want an influencer account, that's 1,500 friends all the way to 3,999. And celebrity is 4,000 or more friends. And that's actually when you have the ability to convert your profile into a page. But what I'm going to focus on right now for the purpose of our our profession and where we are in our profession is we all want to carry an influencer account and I'm going to tell you why so um, have you ever like bumped into somebody at the grocery store here in Texas, we have H-E-B. It's my favorite place. I'm so proud of myself for saying grocery store, not H-E-B. But then here I am. I'm stuck because my Brian just went to H-E-B. But anyways, um, have you ever seen a friend at the grocery store and you're like, Ugh, she must have unfriended me because I haven't seen her like on Facebook in years. And then you get out your phone and you type in her name and nope, you're still friends. Well, she must have not posted in eight years. And then you look and she posts every day, sometimes several times a day, but you don't see her. Has that ever happened to you? Raise your hand or drop a little heart button if that has happened to you. You feel like you're seeing the same audience on Facebook over and over again. Well, I wanna share with you why. Well, it's because <laughs> You are. Okay, so when you carry a user account, I'm gonna fast forward because I just lost my um, notes. And I wanna make sure that I don't get really far off track here. So um, they're loading again now. But when you carry a user account, seven people per day are who are seeing you and that's how, how many people you're gonna have in your newsfeed with the exception of um, new friends. You're gonna see the first five posts of all new friends that you have. And so the average person sees about 21 different people per day in their newsfeed on a user account. The tough part is, guys, that's how many people can see you. Now, I want you to think about this. In our world, as stylists, we feel like 99 out of 100 people already know what Color Street is, and they love it. But we feel like, wow, our newsfeed is really filled with Color Street, right? Reality check. Go out and do an event. Go out and do a home party. What you'll find is pretty much nobody has ever heard of Color Street. So what does that tell you? If you've thought that our market is even a tiny bit saturated, even a tiny bit, a minuscule amount saturated, then what I'm telling you is your newsfeed is filled with people that cannot do business with you. And those are the same people who are seeing you.
Okay, so our goal is to hit the influencer account. Why? Because we're gonna see 50 different people per day and the first five posts of all new friends and the same number of people see us. So the average number of visibility on an influencer account is more than 70 people every single day in your newsfeed. Now that's something to get excited about. Now remember, this stuff doesn't change unless we're changing those things that we talked about at the very beginning, the ranking signals. Do you remember the very first one was relationships? So that's how we change it is by changing who, who and how Facebook sees the relationships, right? So this is really exciting. The next thing is celebrity. Celebrity gives you a limitless reach. Um, we're going to focus on the influencer account with our business because there are some other perks to that. And don't worry, we will eventually get to those. So um, what? let's talk about this, friends, a little bit because there is some things I don't feel like I can talk about social media without talking about a little bit of safety, okay? So safety and intelligence, right? So intelligence. Number one, we don't want to be friends with all color street stylists. Why? Because we can't do business with one another and if you're on this platform and you're elevating your platform to get visibility of others then our ideal prospect is not somebody who's already a stylist however I will tell you um, that we have to constantly re-enroll ourselves we have to constantly re-enroll our top team members right and what I mean by re-enrolling is that's in the mindset it's between the ears so you do want to be connected on social media with your upline and you also want to be connected on social media with anybody who you've enrolled so Sister stylist, it's okay to friend them, but let's go put them on a separate list and unfollow them. So I'm going to talk about decluttering your friends list because this is also super important. But for the protection of your own business, make sure that you're doing that. You are still staying connected with your downline, the people that you have enrolled, and your upline, the people who've enrolled you. That helps to protect this. This gives you the security within your own business, okay? One other safety tip here. We're not accepting friend requests from the Taliban. Ladies, you know what this looks like. It's an American doctor who loves long walks on the beach, and his favorite movie is The Notebook, and he's single, okay? We're not accepting friends from him. In fact, we're going to hit decline, and then we're going to go over to those little three dots, and we're going to hit block, because when we do that, we're telling Facebook that we don't want anything like this, right? And anybody else in this group, we also do not want to accept friend requests from Russian brides. What does that look like? Um, she loves sports, probably loves golf. I don't actually know what she likes because I don't get those, but I know the men in this group are probably getting those and she's probably got lots of cleavage showing or she's wearing very little, okay? Those are not the people that we want to have on our friends list. So Russian brides, Taliban, and Color Street stylists who are sister stylists don't really have a purpose in our newsfeed if we're using Facebook for business, okay? All right, so what are we going to do? We don't want to unfriend Sally who's a sister stylist and we love her when you go to Facebook and you open up your desktop mode you actually under the see more button you have this great little toggle called friend list I love that don't delete people just put them on a list don't delete declutter and when you put them on a list it's okay to go ahead and hit that unfollow button okay because it's not going I'm gonna get hiccup I'm sorry I'm getting hiccups um Hit the unfollow button because we're telling Facebook we don't want our news feed of just 50 people to be clogged with this person. Okay, the biggest thing that's important to know about friends lists is you need to spend some time on those friends lists. So go back, find those friends lists, and engage with those people. I use friend lists for everything. I just did a post a couple of days ago talking about follow-up and how we want to friend the people from our parties and put them on custom friend lists. And then we can go flirt with them. We can invite them to our VIP groups. But the big thing is right before we go post on social media, we're gonna go build a relationship according to Facebook with those people by spending some time on that feed, engaging with those people, reminding them, hey, I'm here because again, what wins? Attention, attention is what is going to win. Okay, so don't, de don't delete, just declutter instead. All right, do you get so tired of hearing people talk about algorithm and you're like, gosh, I wonder if they even actually know what algorithm is? Well, I'm actually gonna tell you what the algorithm is right now because it is an equation. Algorithm is your edge rank, it's rank equals affinity times weight times time decay. So do you remember all of those things we talked about in the beginning? All of those play into effect with the algorithm and this is how it's gonna work. Your affinity is your interaction with others. So this helps to build the relationship. Um, are you tagging, commenting, liking, emoting? What's your group activity with this particular person? All these things really matter. So the first audit I want you to do on your social media is I want you to go to your friend list 
friend request, I'm sorry, and accept or decline every single friend within, within your request feed, right? As soon as you do that, wait about 20 minutes and all of a sudden you're going to start having new friend requests. Why? Because Facebook is a friendly platform. They want you to be a friendly person. When you're being a friendly person, they're going to send friends your way. Did you know that your little icon that says um, suggested friends, do you know your little icon is not going to come up if you have friends hanging in the balance? It's not that hard. If you don't know, just delete, right? Because we're not desperate for friends, but we want to find the people who fit our brand pillars, who are our ideal clients, and we're not going to clutter our feed with anything less. Um, also, groups. This is really important, ladies, especially for those of us that are doing online parties and we have online party groups. You want to use those party groups until you find somebody in that group who's going to become a stylist so that they can then take over that group because a whole bunch of abandoned groups actually lowers our visibility, right? So it's really simple to go back into those groups, throw in a girl's night in, throw in a party, whatever it is. It's a great... Um it's great accountability for us to make sure because it does affect other areas of our business if our visibility is being suppressed. So this is a great way for us to hold ourselves accountable um, to finding a hostess within every party. All right, so the next is um, your post content. Um, what stops their scroll? What, th what slows their scroll? Right now, anything um, living that's small, like kittens, um, babies, puppies, those kinds of things will always stop the scroll. So be thinking about that. If you have a guinea pig at home, for crying out loud, post the guinea pig <laughs> on social media. It's a small animal and it stops the scroll. So keep that in mind. Um, th then we're going to talk about time decay. There is a 70 second timer. I don't want to keep you guys too long. So I'm going to keep talking fast and try to click through this really quickly. Okay. There is a 70 second timer every time you throw a post up. Um, and your goal is for people to react immediately within that 70 second timer. Um, and the clock resets after every single reaction. So if somebody emotes, that means they've clicked love, angry, sad, whatever, right? If they emote to your post, the timer starts over. So it's totally okay. You've spent some time on a post. You've got a really great post up there. It's totally okay. If somebody doesn't react, copy that post delete that post and save that post for later and try again later, okay? Hi, Melissa, glad you're here. Hi, Linda. Okay, so what do we do to beat this 70 second timer? I love working with a syndicate. A syndicate is a group of stylists or um, it's just any group that is working towards this common cause together. So it can be a group of stylists, it can be a family syndicate, whatever. Basically, the understanding of your syndicate is going to be that when you send a link to a post, hi, honey. Um, when you send a link to a post in this communication thread, that their understanding is that they're going to attack it right away. And it is a loving, friendly, great thing for your syndicate to smash an angry face on there because why? Angry faces bring more attention. Um, you know, what's funny is that when you have a really nice and... Um, you have a, this wonderful post, well-written, and there's an angry face. Guess what happens? People love reality TV and drama. They stop and they're like, oh, who's angry at this? They look and see who's angry. Thank you for those angry faces. Yes, yes. <laughs> they stop and see who's angry, and then they wonder what kind of drama is going on. Then they spend time in the comment section. Guess what? You just won the algorithm because people stopped on your content. They hung out on your post. Ha! Ah! Holla. Okay, so today you are going to create a syndicate and this is going to be a group of people who maybe are watching this live with you right now. Create a little message thread or, or um, a text thread. Do not have any conversation in this thread outside of posts that need attention because when that alert goes off in that chat, you want to know to attack it right away because that's one of the best ways that you can support one another, okay? All right, the last thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the whip effect. How can you whip your audience into shape? This is really simple. Um, I'm using the wrong mouse for the wrong computer. <laughs> That's how my day's going. Um, so remember quality over quantity. Try to keep a healthy four to one, four to one posting ratio. That means there's four posts for your audience and only one post to your audience. So an example of this would be you're educating, entertaining, and engaging on every single post, right? All of them. It doesn't matter whether it's one of the whether it's the one or whether it's one of the four, but you're always educate, entertain, and engage. But one of these posts can sprinkle in your color street business because that's for you, not for them. Does that make sense? And make sure that, you know, I, I always like to say post at least four times a day. Now, this doesn't matter where you're posting. You can post to your profile, you can post to groups, you can post to your stories, but make sure you're posting at least four times a day and know that stories aren't actually boosting your edge rank at this time. 
They probably will, but what stories do is they do help you gain a different reach. So when people react to your stories, that pops up in Messenger. That's like giving you a Rolodex to now start messaging back, engage in conversation, and that's building relationship with other people. So there's a fabulous purpose to stories at this time. So remember open-ended questions. Remember kittens, guinea pigs, and all the babies. Um, and those are some of the greatest ways. And one more thing um, that I want to talk about is the content cube. Reach out in Messenger to at least three different people every single day. The easiest way to do this is you've got Facebook friends having birthdays. Instead of posting on their wall, send them a little message that says, happy birthday, friend. And then don't forget, engage, right? Educate, entertain, engage. That's even a messenger. So send a message. How do you plan on celebrating today? Really simple, and you're probably going to get that message back. Make sure you're sending those messages to three different people every single day and comment on the posts of three different people every single day because this is how we're going to bring our Facebook to life. So let's talk about these post prompts for just a minute. What these post prompts are going to do is they're going to help you stay on social media. I don't know about y'all, but I have previously had trouble sometimes writing a story, you know, like... I, we're essentially when we fill out our brand worksheet, we're retelling the story over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. There's six stages of acceptance. And so what we want is our audience to see every single story seven times, right? Six at the very, very minimum. That seventh is that jump and attack one, right? So if we're doing that and we know that they're not seeing every post that we're putting up, we're reposting our same story over and over, but we're rewording it and putting a different picture on it each time because it's gonna change the engagement. It's gonna change the amount of time that somebody is spending on our post. So in our group on every Monday, you can expect in this super seven society is that you're going to get a post prompt delivered. And this post prompt is intended to help you write a story for social media. I want you to remember to put a picture with it. If it doesn't say a picture, make sure you're reading the post because it might tell you to drop a poll. It might tell you to do something a little bit differently, but it's going to guide you with some tools to help you craft a story, stay within your brand message, and stay in front of your audience. And again, uh, sister stylist here watching, <clears throat> if you found something valuable in this post, I want you to attack it in the comments because sharing is caring. That's helping other people in this group to see this post as well. Go ahead and angry face it. My feelings aren't hurt. And again, you're helping to spread that message on to the next person as well. But additionally, if you have team members who you think would benefit from this post and they can't see it because we're in the super seven society, reach out, tell them about the super seven society and the value that's coming from it. Don't try to take this content and then deliver it to them because we want them to be here too. We want them to stand out as a superstar stylist because when she's growing, you're growing as well. So it's one of the things I love about our profession and always remember that attention is what is winning. Get ready. I'm going to edit this post with our first post prompt and then I'll also probably drop it as a separate post in the group as well. Thanks guys so much for tuning in this afternoon for a little bit to learn how to build your audience and build your brand and keep that attention going. Bye guys. Have a great day.